fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Jim Paul, in charge of laying the Union Pacific Railroad tracks into the West, had aged perceptibly in a few weeks. His troubles had begun with an Indian attack on a grading train near Cheyenne, and after that the obstacles were multiplied. Time after time, bands of Indians swept down to attack the railroad workers, tear up the track, burn buildings, kill stock, and tear down telegraph wires. Despite all this... Paul and his track-laying gangs fought valiantly to maintain the schedule. They met each attack with matter-of-fact courage, and when it was repulsed, put down their rifles and picked up their tools. It wasn't savage Indians that worried Paul. It was a far more sinister danger, a menace that worked secretly to plot against the railroad's progress. I could only put my finger on it. I know how you feel, Jim. Hard to fight something you can't see. It was a caboose bounce. A train composed only of an engine and a caboose that moved westward on new rails. One man rode with Jim Paul. He sat near the pot-bellied stove in the caboose. His face was disguised, and his clothing was that of a trainman. There was nothing about him to indicate that he was the Lone Ranger. Do you know anything about this plot that you haven't told me? Well, I know that powerful interests are opposed to the railroad. It could be politicians in Washington. Oh, it could be, yes. It might also be an organization of cattlemen who don't want civilization to break up the open range. There must be a lot of money in back of the outfit. I'm sure there is. You talked to a couple of men while you were in Julesburg. I talked to a very good friend of mine there. A man who knows this part of the country as well as anyone. Do I know him? Oh, I don't think so. His name is Enwall. Charles Enwall. Did you learn anything from him? I wish you hadn't asked me that. Why? I don't want to alarm you, Jim. The warning may mean nothing. What warning? A man named Fabian went through Julesburg the other day on his way to the end of track. He flashed a big roll of money. Who's Fabian? He's a confidence man and a schemer. 
We've had a lot of that kind. Hangers-on who move with the end-of-track community and try to take the pay away from the railroad crews. They don't worry me. My boys can take care of themselves. Very well. But wait. There's something else about Tavian. What is it? Let's wait and see how things work out. Tell me. I, I must know. Fabian asked questions about you. What kind of questions? He wanted to know if you had a family with you at the end of track. Just my daughter and, of course, old Gabby Norton. I consider him a member of the family. Oh, I'm not concerned with Gabby Norton. It's Mary. You think this man, Fabian, will try to hit me through my daughter? Worrying about it won't help, Jim. There's nothing we can do before we reach the end of track. I don't see how crooks can do anything now. General Stevenson has detailed soldiers to help protect our work. Yes, I know. Just the same, I want to get there as fast as possible. I'm going to speak to the engineer. That high wheeler can get more speed out of this old coffee pot. I wish we had a glory hunter like Gallagher at the throttle. buildings at the end of track were, for the most part, light in weight, so they could be periodically loaded onto flat cars and moved westward as the track advanced. There were houses, shops, and cafes. It was in one of the cafes that the man named Fabian sought out Slim Northcott at a corner table. Mind if I sit down? Great Scott, it's you, Fabian. Right. Oh, sit down, sit down. When did you get here? This morning. Did you hear what happened to Greg? Yes. News travels fast along the railroad. Telegraph's a wonderful thing. Greg owed me money, too. I understand he'd been captured before he was killed. Yeah, they had him tied up in the caboose during the Indian attack. Stray bullet got him. Hmm. Does anyone suspect that you were working with Greg? No. In that case, you can work with me. So far, it's been pretty unlucky for the ones that opposed the railroad. I know. And I can tell you why. You can? Yeah. Why? You may not believe this, but it's true. I know it's true. I got it straight. There's a critter that's working with Powell. He's called the Lone Ranger. <laughs> I don't see nothing to laugh about. <laughs> Lone Ranger. <laughs> I've heard a lot of stories about him. He's overrated. He is, huh? Far overrated. And even if he weren't, he could do little against the plan I have in mind. What's your plan? Have you noticed this community? Noticed it? What do you mean? The community at the end of track. The buildings and tents and everything that's in them. Chairs, tables, bar and liquor in this cafe. The barbershop across the street and everything in there. In the restaurant next door. The store with its stock of clothing, smokes, blankets, everything. What about it? It would take a great many trips on tracks that are already taxed to capacity to replace everything that's here. In fact, I doubt if the settlement could be replaced without a great deal of trouble and delay. Get to the point, Fabian. What are you driving at? The destruction of this community. Huh? Complete and total destruction by fire. Why, you could never get away with it. <laughs> no? Haven't you noticed all the soldiers around town? You can thank that Lone Ranger for him. It's through him they were brought here. There could be twice as many soldiers. They wouldn't interfere with my plans. Yeah, well, count me out. I don't care what I do as long as the cash is good and the risk isn't too great. There's very little risk in my plan. As near as I can see, it's suicide. I'm not setting fire to any town, no, sir. Not with the Lone Ranger and the United States Army around. The Indians are going to start the fire. Red Eagle and the Cheyennes? <laughs> Not a chance, Fabian. They've been mighty subdued since the army drove them off and Greg got killed. They'll not be subdued when we finish with them. Now listen, Slim. I'll outline my scheme, then you can decide whether or not there's too much danger for you. Jim Powell has a daughter. Yeah, name's Mary. What about her? They have a house here, haven't they? They got a house and a caretaker by the name of Gabby Norton. Gabby watches over that girl like a brood hen over chicks. Only time Gabby's not around is when Mary's with her sweetheart, Bill McGuire. Now, Fabian, 
Go on, tell me the rest. <laughs> Are you through thinking of obstacles? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to listen to you. Very well. And here's what we're going to do. Slim Northcott listened attentively to the plans as Fabian outlined them, then nodded slowly as Fabian pointed out two men who sat at a table across the room, men who had already been lined up to help. It was about a half an hour later when Northcott rapped on the door of Powell's house. Come right in. Come in, make yourself to... Oh, looks like I'm not the one you're expecting. Well, being as it's time for noonday, Chuck, I figured Bill McGuire would be coming around. Maybe he will, can't tell, but what's on your mind, stranger? You didn't rap on the door to hear about Bill McGuire. You must be Gabby Norton. That I am, yes, sir. Norton's my own name, and Gabby's the one I earned. But I don't run off at the mouth like I used to. I, uh, I, uh... I hope Miss Powell's here. Oh, you do, do you? Well, now, look here, stranger. If you got any ideas about Spark and Mary Powell, you just better... I've got a message from her father. You don't say. What is it, Gabby? Oh, how do you do? Uh, you Miss Powell? Yes. Yeah. I was just telling Norton I have a message from your father. Oh. Has anything happened? Is there something wrong? Where is he? Here's the message. Uh, let me read it first. I'll take it, Gabby. He wants you and Norton to meet him at Windy Gulch. Windy Gulch? What in tarnation is he doing there? That's pretty far south of the tracks. He yeah, sure is. According to this message, we're to go with you. Yes, sir. I got some horses saddled and ready. You better start right away. Why, Dad, ratted, I was fixing dinner. It's most all cooked and ready to set out on the I'm table. I'm sorry, there won't be any time for that. Oh, Dad, ratted all. Dad sent for us, Gabby. We better go. Yes, I reckon so. I'll just set the victuals off the fire. I'll be ready in just a moment. I'll be waiting with the horses. How long is it going to take us to get to Windy Gulch? A couple of hours should do it. I don't know why in tarnation Powell wants me to go along. Fact is, I don't know why he wants either of us. It's downright mysterious, that's what it is. Let me look at that note again. You don't need to look at that note. Now get aboard those horses and let's get traveling. Mister, don't you rush me. I want to see that note. Come on up. A gun. Hey, see him, mister. Do what you're told. <laughs> It goes for you, too, Mary. Get aboard that horse. I don't think I... Do quite... as you're told, or I'll put a bullet right through this old man. No, no, don't shoot. Me. Wait. Wait, don't shoot. And do as I say. Now, I know hey, there's boy. something wrong. Powell didn't send that note at all. Now, me. listen, you. All right, all right. I'm getting aboard. Don't wave that gun so handy. Well, I'm in the saddle. Now, what do we do? I said we was going to Windy Gulch in a minute. Now, get going. Get up, boy. Get up. Get up, there. Soon after Mary and old Gabby rode south from the town, the man called Fabian approached the house. Two men were at his heels. Boys, you know exactly what you're to do. I gave you your instructions. Yeah, we know. We're to make this place look like Indians have been here. You better close the door. Right. Now then, hmm, just a minute. I wonder where to keep the flower. It looks like a flower sack in that ledge. Well, we'll soon know. Flower? Yeah. I'll stand here holding it, just the girl might have been. Let's see, she was startled by seeing a couple of Indians at the door. She uh, dropped the sack uh, like this. Hey, look at it. It's spilled all over the floor. You two leave a lot of footprints of those moccasins you're wearing. I'll leave this Indian feather on the floor as further evidence that Indians came here. Oh, pretty slick, Fabian. Pretty slick of you. Next, we want to make this room look like there's been a struggle. I'll spill this table and the dishes that are on it. Here we are, boys. Smash things up. This place has got to look like Gabby and the girl put up a fight to avoid capture by the Indians. There's just one trouble, Fabian. They say that Slim Northcott... Don't do worry. It. They won't get the chance to tell anything. Now go on, smash things up. Right. Take it over. Smash it.
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. The short train of engine and caboose came to a halt. The Lone Ranger, still wearing his disguise as a railroad man, and Jim Powell stepped from the car to see all work stop. The workmen clutched rifles instead of tools. Bill McGuire, the foreman, hurried toward Powell, his tan face flushed with anger. Bill! Bill, what is it? What's the matter? You're just in time, boss. We've got to get horses for all the men. We've got to get Stevenson and the troopers and head north for the Indians. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. All right. They sneaked into town and captured Mary. <laughs> captured Mary? Yeah. I went to the house for dinner just like we planned. You should see the place, boss. It looks like a cyclone had struck. Yeah, I'm going to see it right now. I'll go with you, boss. You boys go get horses and be ready to ride. I'll be with you in a few minutes. Oh, right, McGuire. How do you know it was Indians who came to the house? Here. This feather, this is one reason. Well, let me see it. That's an eagle feather, all right. And that's not all. A sack of flour was spilled on the floor. There's moccasin footprints all over it. I hope you didn't walk in and disturb the evidence. I didn't need it. You can see everything from the doorway. Mister, you said something about a man named Fabian. Yes. He made inquiries about you. I think he's the one in back of this. Fabian? I don't think the Indians had anything to do with it. Well, I think they did. You better wait, Bill. See what this man has to say. I have a friend named Toto. I know. I know all about him. What of it? He's still with Red Eagle's people. He is? Hasn't Red Eagle learned that Toto's on our side? No. If Red Eagle had sent men to capture Mary, Toto would have given warning. Furthermore, Red Eagle knows better than to send any Indians into town. Red Eagle hates every one of us after that last skirmish. That may be true. But he won't come here while the soldiers are around. Uh, Mr. Powell, I'll go ahead with the train boys. You see the general and have him follow with the troopers. We'll show that red eagle a thing or two. Let's examine the house first. Here's the house. The door's wide open, just so I left it. Look inside. You can see the flowers spill all over the floor and marks and footprints. I'll wait here at the door. Don't add any more footprints to those already there. Gabby Norton's gone, too. Was he with Mary? Yeah. Look how the place is wrecked. There must have been an awful struggle. I doubt it. You can doubt it all you want. I don't. Mary was captured by Indians. The feather and those moccasin prints prove it. Just a minute, Bill. Just a minute, I... nothing. I'm getting a horse and we're going gunning for Redskins. But wait. Look at the footprints again. Those footprints prove that this is a frame-up. Ah, you can save that for someone else. I'm on my way. Oh, wait a minute, Bill. <laughs> wait a minute. Listen to me. I let go of my arm. Let go, do you hear? My girl's been carried off by Indians. But she hasn't. It's not Indians. Oh, last time I'm telling you, let me go. Bill, why don't you listen? This man... I don't care who this man is. I'm not trusting anyone. Now, let me Sorry, go. Sorry, McGuire. Oh. I hate to knock him out, but he's all wrong. You saw that room, Jim. Yes, but... There's supposed to have been a terrific struggle. If that was true, there would be footprints of Mary's shoes, as well as those of the moccasins. That's so. We go riding after Red Eagle's people. We'll do exactly what the plotters want us to do. That's why I had to stop McGuire. But Mary, where is she? What's happened to her, Norton? That's what we've got to find out. I think... Oh, look, Jim. Here comes Toto. Sure enough. Oh, 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 oh. Be glad you're here. Toto, have you come from Red Eagle? That right. He planned to make attack on town. Attack the town? He, he wouldn't dare. White man come. Make powwow. Red Eagle listen. Who was it? Me not know. What did they talk about, Toto? White man say everyone leave town, look for Red Eagle Indians in Valley to North. We would have left town if you hadn't stopped us. Go on, Toto. Red Eagle tell all Indians, spread out, circle through hills, close in on town when no one here. Oh. McGuire's coming too. Oh. Yes. Now perhaps he'll listen to us. You can tell him what you've just learned, Jim. But you say... Your daughter must be found. Otto, 
We think Mary and Gabby Norton have been captured and taken from the house. Tell you the footprints in the house. Oh, uh, Miss Ivy. While you're doing that, I'll get Silver and get out of this disguise. Oh. Bill, wake up. Listen to oh. me. Oh, what hit me? I did, Bill. I had to do it. Now, get to your feet and listen to what Jim has to tell you. You needn't go out after Red Eagle. He's coming here to you. The Lone Ranger went on foot to his well-concealed camp at the edge of town. Working quickly, he removed the disguise from his face and threw off the clothing of a railroad man. He stuffed this into a saddlebag, then hurriedly got into his own clothes, fixed his mask across his eyes, and buckled on his gun belt. Then he saddled the great horse, Silver. Now we're ready, Silver. Otto's well, found the trail. Steady, big fella. One, Silver! Hey, Mr. Abbey. Yes. Look here. I've found plenty of tracks. He's a big fella. What have you found, Toto? Plenty of tracks here in back of Powell House. Hoof marks? That right. How many horses? Me see five. They've got my daughter. They've got it. Take it easy, Jim. All the horses are shod. That right. And we may be sure that Indians had nothing to do with this in spite of the moccasin footprints. Feller who wear moccasin come here from house. Yes, so I see. Over here, tracks made by girl. Not up. We're going to follow this trail. I'm going with you. I've got my horse all ready. Very well. Easy to make fun. One silly. Get him out the scout. In the meantime, Bill McGuire and Jim Paul had discussed plans. Then they had talked to General Stevenson in charge of the soldiers in the town. While Paul set out with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, the foreman rejoined the railroad workers who were ready with horses and weapons. All right, quiet down, boys. Quiet down and listen to me. The plans have been changed. I've already talked to General Stevenson. He says we can take Tonto's word for what's to happen. We're going to do the same as the soldiers. We're going to start north, but instead of going after the Indians, we're going to spread out and drift back here. We're going to give those redskins the biggest surprise they ever had. What about Mary Powell? Don't the redskins have her? No. She's been captured by white men. How about going after them? No, our job is to defend the town. Mary's trail is being followed by the Lone Ranger. Following the trail left by Slim Northcott and the two who had helped him capture Mary and Gabby Norton was at first quite easy. The Lone Ranger made good time as he traveled south with Tonto and Jim Powell following. Then the ground became more broken and there were places where hard rock made it almost impossible to follow the tracks. But the three pushed on in the general direction of Windy Gulch. Slim Northcutt had told the truth about one thing. He had taken Mary and old Gabby to Windy Gulch. See that they're well tied, boys. Get ropes around their feet as well as their hands. Whatever you say, Slim. Matt Raddick, there's no point in tying our feet. We couldn't travel anywhere without a horse. Shut up, Norton. Uh, you might as well kill us now and be done with it. Mary, I don't want to kill you. Slim Northcutt, you can't do anything else and you know it. If I get free to tell my father about this trick, he'll kill you. And if he doesn't, Bill McGuire will. And if he don't, by Juniper, I will. Of all the ornery, downright snakes, you're the lowest. Yeah. What do you expect to gain by this? That's my affair. Can't keep us here indefinitely. I won't have to keep you long. Before sundown, the whole community at the end of track will be in flames. Of course, I don't believe you it. You don't have to believe it. This plan's worked out mighty careful. Everyone in town is going to be out hunting the Indians for capturing you and Gabby. And while they're out, the Indians will come into town. <laughs> now, do you savvy our plan? You, There's you no use that. struggling. You can't get out of those ropes. Uh, I reckon that'll hold her feet. How are you coming? I got the old man tied. We'll leave him right here, boys. <laughs> leave him here? Yeah. Go back to town and see how things work out. If there's a slip-up somewhere and Fabian and we get captured, we can let Powell know that these two will starve to death. If anything happens to us... Hold them as hostage, huh? Yeah. Good idea. Now, get your horses. Hostage. We'll go back and see if there's any town left at the end of track. Right. There we are. What? Hey. Look, Dad. A mess, man. Got him. Take him, Tuttle. Uh, uh, this is a showdown. We'll teach you. Take that. Now, 
Wait, wait a minute. For what? Oh, hit him again. All right. Wait, they hit it and knock it right off his feet. Don't hit me, don't hit me. Why not? Wait, let me fix him. No, no. Take it. They're done it, jumping juniper, that done it. Look at them, Mary, all three of them stretched out as cold as mackerel. Mary. Mary, are you all right? I will be as soon as you cut these ropes. Here's a knife. Let me loose. Let me loose, so as I can fight if one of them pole cats comes to. Ah, uh, me fix. Dad, yeah. Dad, they're going to burn the town. Northcott told me about the plot. We know about it, honey. Bill McGuire's handling things in town. And don't you worry. He will handle them. In town, the Indians were taken completely by surprise. They had crept in to find the community practically deserted. And had spread out to apply torches to the flimsy buildings, but that was as far as they had gone. At a signal, railroad men and soldiers opened fire from strategic points of ambush. Red Eagle and his savages found themselves surrounded. There was no escape. The defenders closed in and used their guns as clubs. The fighting was hand to hand, but the battle was short. Red Eagle shrilled a cry to his men. They threw down their tomahawks and knives and held out their hands in a gesture of surrender. That does it, boys! That does it! Ah, we licked them! We beat them to fare thee well! Now, oh, Red Eagle, <laughs> you and your men have made trouble for us for the last time. We're going to have an understanding. Me double cross. Yeah? I suppose that's how it seems to you. There, fella. Huh? Let me get him. Wait. Let go of me. Let me show you. You trick, oh, Red Eagle. Oh, oh, Please oh, fix. Oh, 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 give me your hand, boys. Give me hold this red skin. Get back there, Red Eagle. Get back. Uh, now stand still or we'll drill you. Hula, Majo. Hula, You, Fabian, stand still. So you're the critter that went to Red Eagle with a plan to wipe out the town. Wait, right? listen, let me explain. That Indian's all wrong. He's got me mixed up. Wait, funny hands, Mr. Right. Powell. I just got here. What about Mary? Where's Mary? He's over yonder with Gabby and some of the men. They're guarding the critters that took him away. Well, Northcott away. talked. He named Fabian as the one who planned the whole idea of burning the town. That dirty double-crossed coyote. With both Northcott and Red Eagle naming you Fabian, it looks like we got a plenty of Boys? We're going to have a packed jail. And by thunder, I'll bet all the tea in China, one of the prisoners will tell who's back of this plan to wreck our railroad. We'll find a way to make him talk, boss. If we don't find a way, we've got a friend who will. we got the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, 